Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Yeah, it's 3.18 in the morning. Well, 3.19 now. Um, and I'm about to do something that I don't normally do. At least I haven't done in a while. And that's make a video without drawing lots first. That's right. Um, uh, what is say? Uh, off the chain right now. All right, so the title of this class is I think we're here now. And we're looking at Zechariah chapter 13. So let's go ahead and get started. Giving all praises and honor to our Father in heaven. Hallowed be his name. Ask him that he will come out here and guide our tongues and our fingers and everything else in the making of this video. In the Son's name we pray. Amen. So be it. First one. In that day, there shall be a fountain opened to the house of David. And to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanliness. Okay, so you're about to clean us up. But this is the first thing we read about over there in Malachi in chapter 3. I don't want to make this video too long. But let's go over there and look at that. You see right here in Malachi 3 and 3 where he's saying he's going to purify the sons of Levi. These are the firstborn in your family. Um, it's traditionally males. But females have the same, um, for the lack of a better word, powers. I shouldn't use that word. They have the same, I don't want to use abilities either. They have the same uh, spirit. It's kind of bad. Anyway, firstborn says that he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. That they may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. And this is why it's important. These are the priests. These are the people they're supposed to carry the tabernacle. Don't get jealous. We, we don't have to put jealousy aside. Anyway, let's go on. Verse 2 says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be redeemed. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. See, now this is why these last classes are important, guys. You know, anyway, look right here where it says Lord of hosts. This ain't our father. This ain't who we call the creator or even the Messiah. This is Lord of armies. This is how you pronounce it, Sabaoth. It says, and it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that beget him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesies. So, this is, like I said, I believe we're here. And, but I'm doing, the reason why I'm doing the class is because I believe our Father in Heaven has allowed me for the first time to understand why this is. Is because of the Merkaba, to put it in one word. The Great Awakening, to put it in a more familiar word. Um, some people are going to call it the rapture. Um, it's because in this time we are promised and are now being given new revelations. Like you said, prophesy prophecies. We're given new prophecies, just like we were told. You said, uh, what did the old man will dream dreams and the young man will prophesy or oh, maybe I got that mixed up. But well, we've been told this the whole time. And here it is when it happens. Guess who coming after these people? Their father and their mother. And the reason why is because the fathers and the mothers. I hate to peek on people. But the baby boomers. Yeah. So the fathers and the mothers are going to be not. Some of them are going to be generation X too. Is these people who are dead set in their beliefs. And what they and what they think, you know. Thing is, they they ain't been to church. The baby boomers, 
a few of them went to church. Most of them did. Most of them stayed watching television and stuff. Baby boomers were the first television babies. You know, you, you call them baby boomers. You can call them television babies, too. Because, you know, their parents um, the ones invented the television or brought it into the house for the first time. So when you hear these children prophesying, don't, you know, think bad that they're speaking evil in the name of the Lord. This is not what's going on at all. These are new revelations that we were promised. And the reason why we're not getting these, I don't like, want to pick on anybody because myself is included in this. The reason why we're not getting these revelations is because we're not reading the word. We're not reading it. We're not listening to it. We're not studying it. We're not, you know, in the word. You know, the book is closed. You, know, you can write it. If you want to write it, write um, Deuteronomy chapter 32. But anyway, let's go. It says, and it shall come. We may come back to that verse. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed, every one of his vision. When he has prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. So now even the prophets are going to be ashamed. So you, so you can imagine you have all of these people getting these new revelations, new prophecies. I should call them prophecies. Okay, so you have the younger generation who are getting these. Like you said, the babies will lead us in. So you have the kids who are getting these. And they are prophesying. And first of all, the parents think they should be killed, even killing them. And then second of all, half of them are in rejection of, of what the prophecies are. And so I guess that's why it means if you deny him, he will deny you. So... You know, you've gotten this prophecy, you've told this prophecy, you, they didn't hurt your feelings. Now, you know, you wish you knew you had never opened your mouth. So now you're going to reject the prophecy? Um, well, if you do that, then when your day comes and you want somebody to stand up for you, um, he's not going to be one of them. He's not going to be. He, he, somebody else may stand up for you. You better hope those people who you sacrificed your ministry to would be the ones who would stand up for you. You know, otherwise, you may be you, you may be non stood up for. All right, verse five says, "But he shall say, I am no prophet; I am a husbandman. For man taught me to keep cattle from my youth." So, is this saying that we're supposed to say that we're prophets? Y'all help me out in the comment section. Is this saying that we are not supposed to be prophets? No. Well, take that back. Is it saying that we are supposed to say that we are prophets? Is this saying that it is bad to say that we are not a prophet? Because I'll tell you quick, I ain't a prophet. Think about it. The prophets, to be a prophet, according to scripture, you have to have a communication with the father at night in a dream. He comes to you in a dream and he tells you something prophetic in the dream. And then you go on to spit that dream, speak that dream um, out loud. You know, what you hear in the night, you speak in the day. And so that's the prophets. And he comes to his opening and we learn about in uh, Third Enoch. Y'all can check classes we're doing on that. Um, this is new. This is, this is um, what we've been promised, guys. So buckle up. But anyway, let's just go on. Verse 6 says, remember the comment section. Verse 6 says, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Okay, so now if you understand that one, please, uh, again, help us out in the comment section. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the men that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. Let's go on. Verse 8 says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. Let's read that again. And it shall come to pass. That in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Now, this is talking about the pole shift. See, this is the main thing that they're trying to hide from us, guys, is the pole shift 
And the reason why I believe, one of the reasons why I believe they're trying to hide it is because they can't do anything about it. And so they don't want us to panic, which we would absolutely panic. <laughs> it's panicable. Is we supposed to be panicking? This is time to panic. And what do we do as a panic? We jump in the Bible and read it as if our life depends on it. You know what I'm saying? He didn't quit his job, and that's all he do now is read the word. You know, talking about he, you know, trying to. Um, find the road map by which his family will be saved it is definitely in the book and it is no place else and i will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried they shall call on my name and i will hear them i will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. So now this one is new. I haven't really um, understood this verse like now. Praise our Father in heaven for allowing his opening to, you know, transmit this message to me and for me to be able to receive it. Praise our Father. Hallowed be his name. So you have a third part that's going on the water, going away. What does it say up there again? Cut off. So you got a third part cut off. Now that's important. You know, it it, golly, it may not mean that they're going to, um, well, it does say die. Because cut off could mean something else. If it weren't, now you could be talking about a spiritual death too. You know, because you're supposed to look at this stuff spiritually. And so if it's a spiritual death, then the spiritually cut off is because um, the Atlantis, for lack of a better word, rises here on this part of the world. It's supposed to come up down there by Louisiana, uh, somewhere in the water. But anyway, that reminds me, guys, I want to say thank you. Um, I normally don't do this. Normally, um, I just don't do this. I ain't going to get into all of the details. But I do feel the need to say thank you um, for all of you guys' support. And, you know, normally we do it through emails and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I know that's been cut off here lately. So I'm going to come on here and say thank you to our supporters, um, all of the supporters, you know. Um, you guys really are, I say the word, taking care of you guys are taking care of us because, you know, if it wasn't for... The things you do, this channel would not exist. This um, Kingdom of Heaven is a hand ministries talking about the Hillbilly Homestead. It, it 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 wouldn't be it wouldn't be it wouldn't exist. You know what I'm saying? We had to go back into Babylon long before now, and you know, without you know being able to keep the Sabbath day according to you know the Father's will, things just wouldn't have turned out the way they are. So we bless y'all, thank y'all, you know. I, I thought about saying the word. I'm gonna go ahead and say it because um, I do pray for you guys, you know, every day. And so I try to. Um, I give myself about an eighty. Right, so. But anyway, let's go. On. Say he awake now. It's three forty-five. Um, and that was it. That takes us back to uh, Malachi and ties it back in together. So y'all go ahead and check out the book of Malachi. It's only four chapters. It's the last book in the Old Testament. So that'll be a good book to read. That'll be an excellent book to read. Y'all, let's call it homework. <laughs> I'll read the book of Malachi. Maybe we'll do a class on it. We had to draw lots. We probably didn't got in trouble on this one, but we give our father... Uh, credit as for me that's why we pray so and for those of you who stuck around this long I want to say a special thank you to you guys especially the ones who hit the like button and left a comment so let me go ahead and um, what it say here in Numbers chapter 6 Yahweh ha bless you and keep you Yahweh ha make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.